it's an important piece to to remind ourselves that when we are burnt out, that it is not because it is just in our heads and maybe we're just not enough or don't have capacity. Um, there is actually a lot happening in the body. So this is like any other, let's say chronic illness, there's a process that goes on. And the great news is with this is that you can change and shift what's happening inside the body. And we're going to, over the course of this mini series, give you some tools to start that process for you. So we are going to get a little technical here. I'm going to show you some slides um, so that you understand all the things that are happening in the body. Sometimes that's helpful in the self-acceptance piece, knowing that, okay, there's just these chemical things that are going on and we're going to work on figuring out how to reset that system. So I'm going to screen share here. So part of what's happening in the body um, it, during stress is that there is two main hormones that show up. So cortisol and adrenaline, which is also called epinephrine. Sometimes you'll see that written in texts. What those do is affect all these different organ systems that you see here in uh, your body. So your eyes, your blood vessels, your lungs, your heart, stomach, liver, your adrenal glands, your immune cells, your muscles. What happens in a short-term stressor? Cortisol goes up, adrenaline goes up, our pupils dilate, our blood vessels dilate because we want more muscles to activate what's called a fight or flight response. Our lungs increase to increase the capacity because our body thinks that we're going to fight something off or run away. Our digestive system decreases, so stomach function goes down. Your immune cells initially will go up, over long term they go down and um, your reproductive system. So your hormones for women, estrogen, progesterone will get a bit wonky, so that affects your cycles. Short-term stressors, this is all a very normal system. You want these things because let's say you did encounter a bear on a hike somewhere, you'd wanna probably run away. I don't know if you'd wanna fight the bear, but you'd wanna do something. So this is a normal way to activate the system to fight or flight. There is also a freeze response, which looks very similar to that. We'll talk about that in a sec. Um, so typical signs that you'll notice with a, with a normal fight flight response is your heart rate goes up, your breathing gets shallow, you can get pale, your digestive system slows down, um, dry mouth, dry eyes. Um, sometimes your bladder is affected, the libido and sex drive goes down. You get very, very focused and get tunnel vision. So your peripheral vision becomes very small. Freeze response, very similar. Heart rate increases. Your body and your muscles get very tense and tight. The difference in the choice that your brain makes with a freeze response is that typically it immobilizes you. So that again is a very normal physiological response. It's a choice your brain is making when it thinks there's danger. So are you up going to fight or run away, or is it safer to freeze in that moment and pretend to be a statue? And so what that feels like for a lot of us is I feel paralyzed, I can't speak, I can't move. And then the rest, all of the other things that's happening in your body is very similar with the, your heart rate and your breath. So like I said, these are all normal responses in the body. So typically you'll see here, you've got a stressor. A stressor could be the saber-toothed tiger, the bear, you have these chemicals that do their thing in your body and then the threat goes away and your stress comes down. Another threat comes up, again, same response and your, and your threat goes down. What's different about today and in today's society is that our stressors are not typically short-term. They are very long-term stressors. So now we're looking at you know, work-life stress, family stress, health stressors. There's a bunch of things that are typically ongoing. So it's not, here's a short stress and then it goes away and then I'm fine. So our body is not capable always of having that release of the stress at the end. So you see, you've got this chronic stress, your body mounts a response. It tries to re-regulate itself. It doesn't fully get there. The stress is ongoing. It tries to mount another response. And then again, it doesn't quite 
have a full release and so on and so forth. So your arousal keeps on going up and up and up and your body continues to think that it's constantly needing to pump out cortisol and adrenaline, which is why often in cases of chronic stress, we see blood, high blood pressure, we see digestive dysfunction, we see a lot of things happening in the body that you may not even know are related to the fact that there is ongoing stress. So long-term stress has this maladaptive approach to it. And part of that is, again, in the body, eventually your brain says, guys, we can't keep up this, this process. I can't keep giving you cortisol. I can't keep pumping out epinephrine. I can't keep sending these signals. And so those productions start to become less and less. And your body starts to become more, less sensitive to those signals. So eventually you start to get really tired. You're not able to continue that kind of response over time. And so what happens is we start to see these symptoms and Julia had described some of these symptoms already. And we're going to put this in a, in a model for you in our, in our next session, but some of the symptoms you'll typically see. So body symptoms, chronic illness, frequent infections, headache, um, chronic muscle tension, breathing problems, and certainly the emotional and the mind, worrying, confidence issues, irritability, depression, um, even nightmares, um, feeling overwhelmed and the inability to make even small decisions, you know, like, do I want coffee or tea? Ah, it's too big of a decision. It's because your body just cannot keep up uh, the fight. Um, and then behavior, often we see um, clumsiness, appetite increases or decreases, sex drive goes down, sleep becomes a problem, you're this wired and tired, there's a restlessness that goes on. So we start to see all of these things um, come together and like no wonder it makes it really hard to cope when you're in this stress cycle and in this burnout cycle. Um, it's a pretty natural um, event. So what we're gonna try to do is bring you some awareness of, hey, what's happening? Am I starting to notice some of these symptoms occur so that you can start to pay attention to what are the tools that I can use to bring myself out of those symptoms? And what are the tools that I can use to bring myself out of a fight or flight state into a more rest and digest state? And I just wanted to mention this one last slide. So our brain has the capacity to form new connections and to form new habits and patterns. That's the cool thing is that you don't have to stay stuck in these response patterns and that can change your physiology. So part of what we're doing in this mini series is looking at, hey, here's all these things that are happening, are happening, it's important to be aware of them. And now what we're gonna do is figure out how to undo that process or prevent that process from occurring. So that is the cool part with all of this. Yeah, thanks. It was a beautiful explanation. I like, I love it. Yeah. <laughs> really, I like the science bits. I sometimes, yes. I mean, not everybody likes them, but some people like to kind of know what's happening in the body. So, and also I think that is pretty good because really make us aware that is a physiological that we don't have anything wrong. That is something that is super important to understand that mm -hmm. is actually happening in the body and is not us, it's a, a physiological reaction to something that is actually stress us. And it's where also embodiment coach is why we believe that the embodiment coach is so effective in uh, mm -hmm. helping and support with burnout because it's learned by doing. So we actually, we are actually in charge with our body to change habits and to train our body to change. When you say build the capacity, it means in, in our body, not build the capacity here. Like I don't have to yeah. think only different, but I have to just do something with my body to change that thought that I have. Yes. So is a quite, is an holistic approach is a word that we use to use also sometimes in, but in this case, I like to use it. I don't always like to use holistic approach, but it is. Yeah. <laughs> and so, yeah. yeah. 
because and, uh, so this is why really the connection with the body and actually move the body and find a really practice that can uh that can be uh that our body relate can actually help us to be to notice manage and prevent exactly yeah so the first part of all of this is becoming aware of all of these things that are going on so i think many of us particularly as women it's if I can just push through to this next thing, if I just get this, just this one more thing and I'm going to just, I'll, oh, I'll just stay up late this one time or I'll, whatever it is and all this life stuff happens around us. It's part of that is noticing, like, is that my habit, my pattern, my tendency to, to always be driven forward, to overgive. And part of that is using the body as a way to understand and to start to notice these patterns. So the first part is just becoming aware that you have these patterns, knowing that one, it's okay, it's not good, bad, right, wrong, but they are there and there's a capacity to shift and just become aware so that you can make a different choice. Yeah, and then the last thing that we don't have to forget ever, as women that sometimes we become like oh i have to do this and just be so serious about is that we have to bring joy uh, pleasure and fun into things as much as we can also and i will add more when things get difficult because is uh, um is good and uh, actually our body is happy when we just bring joy also in simple act and pleasure and fun and so we will talk about how to bring joy pleasure and fun also in difficult situation and uh, how this um, topic about pleasure and fun is fundamental actually to manage burnout and also to prevent it and I love this topic about pleasure. <laughs> so, but we will talk about it in the in the fourth episode. For now, we we close this episode and uh, we um in the next episode we will uh, give you an embodiment tool, a very basic one, but super important that is called centering and uh, is uh, the first part about noticing so as Kenneth was saying the first thing that we have to learn how to do it is just notice what is happening and we start from our body yes yes all right so until next time so go ahead and watch the centering video and we will see you in the next episode of Where Are You At in Your Burnout Cycle.